In this section, we'll take a detailed look at the sprite resource in GameMaker Studio 2. In video 1, we'll look at the main sprite interface and learn our way around its options and controls. In video 2, we'll check out the basics of drawing using the in-engine image editor. And finally, in the last video, we'll take an advanced look at the drawing tools in the image editor. By the end, we'll be able to create sprites completely in-engine, setting the size, drawing the graphic, and more. So let's get started. This video focuses on the main interface of the sprite resource. We'll take a look at importing sprites, sizing options, texture settings, sprite origins, and finally, collision masks. GameMaker Studio 2's sprite editor is the interface we'll see every time we're dealing with graphical resources within our projects. It shows every time we create a new sprite resource. The first thing we typically do after creating a new sprite resource is give it a name. This can be done at the top left of the sprite resource interface. We should remember to use naming conventions for easier organization later on. Next, we have two options. If our project's graphics are made in an external program like Photoshop, then we'll probably want to import the graphic. For this, we have the image section of the interface. Here we can import, edit, and resize our sprite. In this case, we want to import. So all we need to do is click the import button. This will show Windows Explorer, allowing us to browse for the image file or files that we wish to import. If the sprite is an animation, saved as a sequence, we can select multiple images and import them all at once. GameMaker will put them all into new frames of the sprite's animation. We can now see these images in the frame preview area of the sprite resource editor and also in the origin and mask editor region just below the frame preview. We can click each frame and preview it in the origin and mask editor region. We can also play the animation by clicking the play button located to the right of the name input field and above the frame preview region. Adjusting the animation speed does not affect the speed it plays in game. This is only for the preview within the sprite resource interface. We can also create sprites from scratch using GameMaker's built in image editor. Typically, the first thing we do when creating a new sprite from scratch is set the canvas size. We can see the current size of the canvas under the image section of the sprite resource interface. Clicking the button with four outwards facing arrows in it will bring up the canvas sizing interface. Here we can scale the existing image or resize the canvas. Scaling means stretching or contracting the current sprite to a new size. Resizing the canvas will simply adjust the canvas size, cutting off any pixels which may lay outside the new region. To switch between resize modes, we can simply click within either region. Under the scale region, we have the width and height input boxes where we can define the new size of the sprites. Next, we have the maintain aspect ratio option. If this is selected, GameMaker will automatically adjust the width or height to maintain the initial height to width ratio, meaning the sprite will not skew. We can turn this off if we want in order to manually enter both width and height. Below this, we have two drop-down lists. The first is Scale In. The options are Pixels and Percent. Pixels means we enter the new size of the sprite in pixels. Percent means we enter a percentage to scale the sprite by. A percentage lower than 100 will reduce the size, and a percentage higher than 100 will increase the size. Finally, we have the option of Interpolation. We can either have no interpolation at all, meaning the pixels are not changed in any way during the scale aside from the size, or we can use linear interpolation, meaning the pixels will be smoothed during the resize to try and improve the image. This is noticed a lot when scaling up an image as it would result in a blurry looking image. Under the resize region, the options are much the same, except we don't have the interpolation option. This is due to the pixels in the image not actually being changed. It simply adds or removes pixels depending on if we scale up or down. To apply these changes, we simply click Apply at the bottom left of the canvas resizing interface. Back on the resource editor, we have the texture settings region located directly below the image region. Here we can adjust the way the sprite is handled in terms of texture pages. The first two options are for tiling. One for tiling horizontally and the other for tiling vertically. These options simply adjust how GameMaker saves the sprites to a texture page in a way that optimizes and removes risk of texture glitches when drawing the sprite as tiled. In most cases, this is unneeded. We then have the separate texture page option. 
This will tell GameMaker to give this sprite its own texture page. If it's an animation, each frame will also receive its own texture page, so be very careful when using this as it will increase the texture memory used exponentially. This option is typically used for texture maps and textures intending to be used for 3D games. Finally, we have the texture group options. All the texture groups we create will show here and we can select which group the sprite will go on. Texture groups allow us to tell GameMaker how to group our sprites. For example, we might group all our menu elements together. GameMaker will then store the images for each group on a texture page together, optimizing the process of fetching textures to draw as GameMaker doesn't need to swap pages as often, if at all. The less texture swaps our game needs to do, the better. Beneath the frame preview, we have the Origin and Collision Mask editing region. By default, this shows the sprite origin. The sprite origin is the center of the sprite and acts kind of like putting a pin in a piece of paper. This pin defines the pivot point of the image if we rotate it and how it's positioned relative to a grid. By default, the origin is at the top left of the image. In many cases, we may wish to change this. To change the origin, we can either click in the preview region to place it, we can manually edit the origin values shown between the frame and origin preview regions, or we can select from presets using the drop-down menu found to the right of the origin input boxes. These presets allow us to place the origin at the bottom left, top right, centered, and more. The final part of the sprite resource editor is collision masks. Beneath the texture settings region, we can find the collision mask region, which is collapsed by default. Clicking the small arrow will expand the region and also put the origin and collision mask region into collision mask mode. Collision masks define the collidable region of a sprite. When GameMaker tests for collisions, it looks for overlapping collision masks and returns true if the collision masks do overlap. We can edit the collision masks to make these regions more or less accurate to the image as required. The first option is Mode. Automatic automatically creates a collision mask as best it can. This option uses the tolerance slider to automatically set the size of the collision mask. Full image is as the name says, the collision mask just covers the entire canvas. And finally, manual allows us to enter the collision mask regions manually. To enter these regions, we can either use the input boxes within the collision mask region of the sprite resource editor, or we can use the edge points on the mask within the preview region to resize it with our mouse. We also have the type option. By default, the type is set to rectangle as this is the fastest collision mask to process. We also have ellipse, diamond, precise, and precise per frame, which are all much slower to process but are sometimes required depending on our game. Precise will make the collision mask based on the pixels within the image, and precise per frame does the same but separately for each frame of the animation. This is rarely required and not recommended for optimization reasons. The final option is the tolerance slider. This is the pixel alpha tolerance and allows us to set how sensitive GameMaker is to pixels within the image. This will change how the automatic mode scales the mask as it will ignore the pixels with a lower alpha than the tolerance slider. In this video, we learned all about the options available to us in the main sprite interface of GameMaker Studio 2. In the next video, we'll take a look at the basics of drawing using the built-in sprite editor.